Hi there, I'm Adam and I'm a geologist. Geology is the study of the Earth, and one of the ways in which we can study the Earth is to look at rocks. Normally, this involves going into the countryside, camping and looking at rocks in the field. Fortunately, the streets of London are lined with lots of interesting rocks, and so we can study them from the comfort of the city. Me and my team are going to take you on a complete rock cycle around the city of London and show you how we can interrogate that entire rock record just from London. The rock cycle is fundamental to the study of geology. It describes how rocks are created, changed and destroyed by different processes on the planet. We'll be starting our rock cycle tour deep below the surface of the Earth with the production of magma, the starting point for the formation of igneous rocks. Wow, this is a granite. Granite forms when magma cools, and magma forms when you heat up rock until it liquefies. This is similar to making sort of ice in an ice cube tray. You take water that's liquid and freeze it and make crystals of ice. These, there are different crystals in this beautiful granite. We've got plagioclays here, we've got some quartz, we've got some mica, and this all makes the composition of granite. A professor once told me that every millimetre of growth on a crystal is equal to 100,000 years of cooling, which means that this rock would have cooled over about 2 million years, which is about 10 times longer than, the, than humans have been on Earth. So this has formed over a really long period. Now the way we can cool a rock really, really slowly is to take it and cool it in the Earth, where there is still heat from the Earth's core. And in this way, we've formed this beautiful granite that has formed one of these beautiful chairs that people can sit on. Granites are called intrusive igneous rocks and they are sort of the parent to a lot of volcanic rocks that we're going to be looking at later. Magma doesn't always cool down deep in the earth. Sometimes it erupts at the surface. Hot, buoyant magma rises through the earth's crust and can be exposed at the surface. When this happens, Gases that were trapped in the magma escape, resulting in an eruption. The same process occurs when you shake a bottle of coke and open the cap. The gases that were trapped in the coke escape, causing the gas and the liquid to rush out of the bottle. Rocks that form during volcanic eruptions are known as extrusive igneous rocks, and we can find them right here on the streets of London. I'm here at beautiful historic Shannon House, but I'm not interested in Shannon House. I'm interested in the rocks outside it. This beautiful cobble street road, street road uh, is made out of rocks like this, very dark um, and fine grain. You can't actually see anything in it, perhaps some chewing gum. Um, and this rock is what's called a bas is what's known as a basalt. It will have cooled down very quickly in a volcanic eruption when lava has erupted at the surface. The surface. The rock is very hard, and that's why they dig it up and use it as paving slabs. Um. When fresh igneous rocks are brought to the surface, whether by nature or by humans, they are broken down by weathering processes and transported during erosion. This results in the production and transport of loose sediment into the oceans. These processes are active on the streets of London today. Rainwater is slightly acidic, and because of that, it eats away at rock. And these paving slabs in London, they've been here for hundreds of years, and so rain has really had a chance to eat away at it. It's formed these little dimples and impressions, and then rainwater collects in these dimples and eats away at it even more. This process is called weathering, and then this forms sediment from this pavement. The sediment can then be washed away down into the River Thames in the process known as erosion. And once it's in the Thames, it's swept out to sea. 
Sediment that flows into the ocean sinks and collects on the sea floor. As more sediments accumulate, they become compacted and form sedimentary rocks. These are the most common type of rock found at the Earth's surface. So I'm here at Suffolk Cathedral, and we've now been washed into the ocean on our rock cycle. This rock here has got some remnants of shells in it, and it's also got some evidence for what we call cross-bedding. So here, we have the bottom of the sea, and as waves wash over the sediment, they climb on top of each other, forming these crossbeds. These crossbeds would have formed ripple marks under the sea, and so it's indicative of shallow water. The conditions that this rock would have been formed under are a shallow marine condition, similar to the Bahamas today. Animals that die in the ocean also sink to the sea floor. In some instances, their hard remains are preserved by the accumulating sediment. This results in the formation of fossils. Fossils are often found in the rocks that make up some of London's most iconic landmarks. So I'm here at St Paul's Cathedral, but I'm not here for church. I'm here to look at these beautiful fossils in this red rock. This red rock is a siltstone and it formed in the sea. But how do we know that it formed in the sea? Well, it's got these beautiful nautiloid fossils dispersed throughout the rock. These fossils, these animals would have been like squid with a shell. And so they lived in the sea, and so for them to be in the rock, the rock must have formed in the sea. Sedimentary rocks don't always form in the ocean. Sediments can also accumulate where there is space on land, for example in rivers, and indeed in deserts. Here we have a beautiful sandstone that was formed in the desert. And how do we know it was formed in the desert? Well, we can see, like I was explaining earlier in the limestone, there's this cross bedding where the beds of rock meet each other at the top here. And that would have been formed by, by big dunes and the internal structure of these massive dunes as the wind flows over them. So the rock's made of, made of sand, and then that sand has been compressed, and it's been exhumed to the surface, and it's now here in this beautiful building. Um, and yeah, that's it. I mean, like some of this stuff, look at that, gorgeous. Absolutely cool. And here, you've got like the, the geometry really clearly from the top and the bottom. I mean, like you can even see that here, the grains are bigger than on, on this bit. Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> Tectonic forces can cause continents to crash into each other. When this happens, rocks are pushed together and forced upwards creating mountains. The rocks that are trapped between the colliding plates are subjected to heat and pressure formed during mountain building. Under these conditions, rocks begin to metamorphose. So I'm here just outside Guildhall Yard, which is being used as a COVID testing centre. And I was going to go and look at the slate over there, but we've not been allowed in. So instead, I found this beautiful rock here, which is also a metamorphic rock. And what I wanted to show you is that when you apply pressure to a rock, the minerals all line up and you get this beautiful, what we call foliation. You can see there's bands of dark minerals and bands of lighter minerals that have all aligned because of the pressure that's been placed on them because of mountain building. So this rock would have been a sediment originally and it's now been subjected to a little bit of heat and a little bit of pressure in a process called metamorphism. And that's made it line up like this. To explain how foliation works, uh, I'm going to take these pens, and each one of these pens represents a mineral. And then if I apply some pressure to each of these minerals, all of the pens should broadly line up along the same axis. And this forms layering in the rocks that we saw in the metamorphic rock. In the middle of a mountain range, the pressure and the temperature can get so high that rocks start to melt. This creates rocks that have been created like metamorphic rocks, but have been melted like an igneous rock. I'm 
I'm here at the entrance to the London Bridge experience, but I'm going to be giving you a different kind of London Bridge experience. This beautiful rock behind me is a Migma type. In our rock cycle, we're now in the centre of a mountain range. As there's so much pressure and so much heat, this rock is beginning to melt. We had formed parallel laminations in the rock, and this is beginning to give way to a little bit more waviness. The minerals are starting to segregate and join their own minerals. So we've got patches of pink K feldspar here, we've got patches of black biotite here. This is all the result of some partial melting of these crystal grains and the, the heat that goes on in mountain building. We could also liken this to an igneous rock. The rock has melted almost to a magma and it's now formed again as a, as a metamorphic rock. We're quite neatly back to the start of our rock cycle with the melting of rock deep in the earth. I am the London Bridge Experience. So on our tour of London's rocks, we've seen how the Earth's core can melt rocks and create new rocks. Rocks can be eroded and washed out from the Thames into the ocean where they can be deposited as sediments, capture fossils within them. These fossils can then be compressed by mountains and form metamorphic rocks with beautiful foliation. And we can do all of this just by walking around London. So I hope today I've shown that we can, that we can all be geologists without the need of the field. Perfect, I think we've got it. Yeah. Let's go. Oh-ho! If you have enjoyed this video and want to join in, you can download the London Pavement Geology app, which helps you identify different rocks around the city. A fascinating world of global processes await.